being once an inmate myself is something that um, it's no words really to describe that experience, especially um, when you find Islam in that type of environment. A lot of people don't realize that many of the inmates or the Muslims inmates inside embraced Islam while they was there. So many, just like myself, had really no contact with Islam or Muslims before incarceration. So like myself, being originally from South Central Los Angeles, where on the t side of LA that I lived, on what we call the East Side, we really didn't have much presence of the Muslims. Whereas on the West Side, that's where you have a lot of the known messages that you hear about, like uh, Masjid Ibn uh, uh, Omar Ibn Al-Khattab, you know, big masjid there. You have several other masjids on that side of town. So for myself, coming in contact with Islam and the Muslims, and then finally uh, reaching free society, it's been like something that's undescribable because being in one world versus another world, you know, only knowing one way to live prior to incarceration, then getting out and you're in a totally different world. It's like, it's not like you're getting out after 20 something years and you're going back to your old family and uh, the same uh, situation that you was once in, but you're actually coming out as a Muslim and there's a totally different set of circumstances that you would face um, versus uh, before. So I just wanted to say that briefly about myself, um, that I'm here before you as um, an ex-gang member, ex-inmate, <laughs> the, whole, the whole line, you know. So uh, alhamdulillah that I'm, you know, Allah blessed me to be a Muslim today. So alhamdulillah. Um, I just want to take something from this story of Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. And... One of the things about it is, I think about is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises people up as he raised up Yusuf, alayhi salam, after being thrown in a well, after being thrown in a well and forgotten, and essentially purchased for a low price by people in the marketplace and sold. And during that time, uh, in that process of being just attempted to be a seduced by the women, um, the king's wife, all of these different things that follow. One of the things about the story, though, you know, just throwing into the well and being forgotten is something that I think about because I look at myself in that situation where I was on a bus being transported to prison. And I was just sharing this story recently with someone, and I didn't think about it until just the other day that. When I was being transported to prison, out of all the times that I had been in and out of the courts and things like that, um, they would take a certain route so that you're not near the neighborhoods, you know, and no possible break, breakouts and things like that. But this particular day, I told myself, I said, this will be the last time that I probably am going to see my family again. I knew it. I, you know, I was sentenced to life. So... I said, I'll never see my family again. But this particular day, for some reason, strange reason, the bus drove right down my block. And I, it's never happened. It, for some reason, they was, uh, you know, for whatever reason, they saw about law, but they drove down my block and I was able to look down the street that I was raised on. And that's the last time I've seen that street in 23 years. 23 years. And um, I never knew what would happen. And, and I'm sure with Prophet Yusuf, السلام, when he was thrown into the well, he never knew where he would end up. Um, I never knew where I would end up. And one of the things I told myself, even though my lifestyle was definitely jahiliya, uh, you know, my lifestyle was totally against Islam, I told myself that. God, I said, God is not going to leave me in this place. I said that to myself. I said, for some strange reason, even though I know I was sentenced to life, I feel like at some point, uh, sometime that maybe I will be released. 
And as I went through my prison sentence and the Islam came into my life, I knew as soon as the moment that I knew that I was going to accept Islam, I said to myself that this is what I thought years ago, that Allah would not leave me in this place. So when we relate the story, people will plot against you, even your own kin. Your own kin would even plot against you. Your friends, the people that you thought would be your friends. And in the case of Yusuf, it was his own brothers that plotted against him to throw him away. And that's what happens to many of us because so many of us are embracing Islam inside the prison system. It's the fastest growing religion in prison. And it's many of the African Americans and Latino Americans are embracing Islam. And we're a people that don't know anything about Islam when we embrace it. So it's like we're in an isolated bubble just trying to figure out what's Islam. What's Islam? And when we write letters trying to get some type of response from the outside, usually it falls on deaf ears because there's a disconnect between ourselves and the people in the free world. So Yusuf only trusted in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which for, for us, you, that's all you have is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it's actually a strength. It actually raises us up. And in the population, the prison population, and amongst the guards, the prison guards, the employees, when they see that taking place, when they see an inmate becoming Muslim, and they see his state being raised up by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they don't understand it. Because now, him coming through the regular child line to take a meal, he's saying, I don't want to eat this food because it's not halal. They don't understand what's, what's this transformation that's taking place. They really don't understand it. Then they see that we're not involved in any of the legal activity that's taking place in the prison. They see people being called away from gangs and, and gambling and all of the things that take place inside the prison. It's more of that inside than you see sometimes out here. 